welcome to Creation in the 21st Century. I'm your host, Carl Ball, founder and director of the Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose, Texas. If there was any program you should ever record as we're producing it and as it's being aired, now is the time. If there was ever a time you needed to call a friend for a program, this is that time and this is that program. The title to today's program is Unveiling the Ark. Now, worldwide, people are vitally interested in the question, is Noah's Ark findable? Is it historic? Did dinosaurs live in that world before the flood? It is a very appropriate scenario in which we find ourselves today in the studio at TBN where they have erected a marvelous palace reminiscent of the days of Babylonian glory and honor and later Babylonian dishonor. In fact, this is the palace of Esther and Ahasuerus replicated and so we're going back in time. I understand that there are over 500 cultures that have reported a global flood over 500 cultures that one way or another have described individuals involved in that flood. And one singular man who along with his family built a boat, an ark, a vessel of escape and refuge and survived the flood. And if that is the case, then we are the posterity. Well, actually that is the case. And we are involved as being the recipients of the grace of God and the benefit of the activities of Noah, his wife, Shem, Ham, Japheth, their wives and their activities. And in the posterity, we find incredible benefit. As you know, I'm involved in a lot of things. One of the more intriguing things that I'm involved in goes beyond the excavation of dinosaurs and fossils and archaeology because it has to do with archaeology. Can we find the vessel? Is there evidence that the vessel that our forebears used to cross from that antediluvian, pre-deluge, pre-flood world to this decaying generation, is there evidence that that vessel is historic, is on a mountain? I have assembled today some very dear friends, and uh, two of these are experts on archaeology, the search for Noah's Ark. In fact, they both have been involved in the search for Noah's Ark. And the third is making a very special presentation to the Creation Evidence Museum and has commissioned something that you are going to witness. Well, I want to welcome three friends, three gentlemen. First of all, Dr. Don Shockey. Hey. You and I go back hey, a Dr. long, Carl. long way. A long way. I mean, we've climbed mountains together. Absolutely. We we've, have slid down crevices together. We've done that. We've melted ice to get water. That is correct. We've, we've had gorillas fire their guns over our heads. Uh, that yeah, is correct. Some exciting times together. In fact, we had the gorillas threaten to shoot down our helicopter if we didn't leave. Absolutely. And then that expedition in 90 that we, did, we thought the whole thing was falling apart and we had to meet with the gendarmes in that little gazebo. And they said, you can't go, you can't go. And remember our little friend? Oh, Don, our you're going to have to tell this story because now what mountain are we talking We're about? We're talking about Mount Ararat in the- You mean the mountain that the Bible describes as absolutely. the placement for Noah's Ark? Absolutely, and don't get all shook up when they, they say, uh, the critics come and say the mountains of Ararat. Well, there's greater and lesser Ararat, and that's the mountains of Ararat. Yes. And what the Bible says is true. We have scientific evidence and eyewitness reports. Well, let me ask up top. Mm -hmm. Do you believe Noah's Ark really is in place on greater Ararat? Uh, both from a scientific view and in my heart as being a Christian, absolutely 100% uh, sure, and I don't have to touch it to know it's there, but it, it, that's where it came to rest. I knew the answer to that question before I asked it. Absolutely. Now tell us that little story. We were in this very small 
uh, barracks building or office building with barracks around us with the Turkish military. It was the last thing that we had to do before we got permission to fly in a helicopter that we had rented in Istanbul. To fly the mountain, we had the location where they said that two pieces of a man-made object were on the uh, northeast side in the Abic II Glacier, but we had to come and give our papers to the army that was guarding the border and so forth. And you and I were sitting there and the commander was looking and he was saying, yoke, 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 which is no in Turkish. He said, you can't fly. I know all the blood rush from my face and yours too. That yes. We had made a previous trip to Istanbul to get the permission, all the arrangement for the helicopter. We were now knowing where to go in this little Kurdish village of Dobiasit. And now the army says you can't go. And our little Turkish friends looks at this commander and he said, uh, hey, he said, you and your soldiers get all your gas and oil from my brother and my company, don't you? He said, yes. He said, you're a month and a half behind in your payments. You either let our American friends go and fly or you get no more gas and oil. And the commander said, where do I sign? Where do That's I sign? That's right. He and, said, and, you fly. I mean, it was, you fly. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> all this work. We knew where to go and it, at the last moment, though, Satan was trying to get in there to thwart the, yes. what we were attempting to do. That was an incredible experience with the sacrifice of little widows and people of means Absolutely. all combined together to make it possible. Absolutely. Don, it's good to see you oh, again. Oh, it's great to be here. We have some more mountains to climb. Uh, we sure do. And, yeah. and how do you like the ambiance? And speaking of a flood and waters in the background, you can hear the pristine fountains uh, simulated from the palace. Just being here is... Uh, uh, religious experience, a Christian experience. It's, it's awesome. Yes, it is. Now, I want to welcome another dear friend. I've known of you for years, Alfred. You are a seasoned ARC researcher, mountain climber, and you're brought to the program today for a very special reason. You were commissioned to, uh, to render an incredible painting that we're going to be unveiling on the program. You're the brilliant artist that did that. But before we get to that, tell us what you have done in the search for Noah's Ark, please. Well, I was invited to go to Turkey with a group of men back in the late 60s. A Frenchman said he knew where Noah's Ark was. Fernand Navarra. Fernand Navarra. Now, did you have your, you have your doctorate? You are a doctor, Alfred Lee. Did you have your doctorate at that time? No, I had done work on my first masters, but it was interrupted by the Vietnam War. Yes. So I was in Vietnam taking movies. That experience is what they needed to take movies on Mount Ararat and document the expeditions. That's how I got involved, was through my art and my motion picture photography. All right. Did the team, what team were you a part of? I think we're talking about the 6970 expedition. Yes, we formed the Search Foundation, Scientific Exploration and Archaeological Research. We wanted a team that had scientific background, and we actually had scientists from the South Pole working with us from the Arctic Institute of North America. These are people who had been decorated by Queen Elizabeth for their heroic work in Antarctica. They knew ice. They had equipment for coring down. And uh, we were tired of fly-by-night archaeologists yes. making claims with no scientific background. So we assembled this scientific exploration yes. and archaeological research. And so we went in 69. Uh, I was the photographer and I filmed the first expedition. Now tell this global audience, did you find anything of note and merit relative to Noah's Ark or a possibility of being related to Noah's Ark? Yes, we found wood embedded in the Parrot Glacier at the same place Navarra had seen wood and a construction in 52, 53, and in 55. He had seen that construction. He had seen it from a distance, but because of military and political reasons, he wasn't allowed to get close. But he was able to film and shoot at a distance. 
we wanted to go in there and we had permission we had connections with the president of turkey and uh, others and they let us go right up to it what did you find all right we dug for a couple weeks the ice had covered the construction that navarra had seen it was about 14 feet of ice on top of that so we started digging and coring unveiling the ark hopefully and we finally after a couple weeks of hard work were able to find remnants of wood broken off from the main structure that was in the ice pack between the ice pack and a cliff was this uh, crevasse and a meltwater pond right there so the water was melting from the heat reflected off of this cliff and so we were able to actually find wood all along this place right here at the same level as Navarra had seen it earlier. And I'll show you photos of the whole thing, oh, this including is be, wood. This is an experience. So all of the, did you get to touch any of that wood, Alfred? I carried it off the mountain every you day. You were the pack mule. On, right. <laughs> I've always been a donkey. Uh, I was going to say another word, but I won't here. But on, in my own back, the, the backpack I used in Vietnam was my camera bag. And in there were pouches, and I was able to put the wood in there as we would dig every day, and we would bring it down. And all camp. these years, since 1970, some 35 years at the time of this recording, you have kept little slivers of that wood as souvenirs, correct? Yes. Do I have a surprise for you today? Stay tuned. Now, we have John Adolfi. John, it's a pleasure to have you on the telecast today. Thank you, Dr. Bob. And uh, while you have not been involved directly in the research to try to unveil Noah's Ark. That's correct. You have commissioned Dr. Alfred Lee to do an incredible painting of Noah's Ark that we're planning to unveil. And you are planning to present that as a gift to the Creation Evidence Museum. Is that correct? That is correct. My uh, search for Noah's Ark begins in 1986 with a phone call to Alfred Lee, who did not know me at the time. And uh, Alfred had just gotten back from his latest expedition, and he was on his way to the one and only Archathon that was held in uh, New Mexico, farming New Mexico, right. And I introduced myself to him. We talked about going up the mountain again in 86. I was all excited, and I thought, well, I'm going to raise some money. It didn't happen. I understand. I've done so we, we, <laughs> we were out of touch for many years. And then as I was thumbing through some literature, the, the Uncle Arthur's Bible stories, I was noticing some artwork of Noah's Ark, and I thought, well, there's one that has seven of the clean animals and two of the unclean. Well, there's, there's some biblical accuracy. But as I was looking at it, I thought, is this what it really looked like? I wonder what it would look like if we were to take all the research, of, research done up to this point collectively and we're to take that and then transform that or transpose that onto a fine art print of Noah's Ark, a snapshot of something that happened 4,500 years ago, which many people today uh, look at as, as a fable. By a qualified artist who has actually been involved in the research. Wow, who would be the most likely candidate for that job? You sought him out, you commissioned him to do that painting. Now, gentlemen, let's find ourselves looking over some actual artifacts and archives that are absolutely priceless. First of all, Alfred, would you, would you give us an idea as to what Noah's Ark really looked like? We have Babylonian descriptions, we have Oriental descriptions, we have descriptions from the South Pacific, envisioning various vessels, but you have done decades of research, have been a part of, as Dr. Shockey has been a part of, actual research on the mountain. What did Noah's Ark really look like? Well, we're getting a little ahead of our story, but this is from actual eyewitness accounts that I know personally. And as an archeological illustrator, I was able to draw from firsthand knowledge from the testimonies of living eyewitnesses now who had seen it. Let's tell this audience who those eyewitnesses right. were. First of all, there was George Hagopian. Yes 
who grew up near Mount Ararat, he and his uncle and other shepherds grazed their sheep and goats on the mountain every summer. After a four-year drought, no rain or snow for four years, animals were dying, the grass was dying, they had to climb higher and higher on the mountain to get up in the green zone where the water, yes. the melt water from the glacier, uh, there were green meadows there. The women made cheese and and knitted uh, the wool and so on, made thread and yarn, while the man herded the sheep and the goats. This was a practice that the Armenians have done for hundreds, thousands of years. And what year are we talking about that you're describing now? All right, the year of the drought uh, was in the early part of the 1900s. Approximately 1906 was the end of that. I'm not very good at dates, but Approximately 1906 was when his uncle and he, George, went on up toward the top of the mountain. Okay. The Armenians had seen the ark before. It was a matter of fact, it was a matter of their culture, it was part, a central part of their religion. And others in their village had seen it, his grandfather had seen it, but his uncle said this year, this is a smooth year. Maybe we can see the ark this year. Maybe it's been unveiled. So they climbed on up, and I have photos of the whole thing. And uh, they now, saw the ark you have photos like of George Hagopian's climb? No, not his climb. He didn't have a camera. Uh -huh. No, but the way he yes, went. Yes, the way he went. The meadows and the As trail. As a photographic documentary. Yeah, that's right. And I, I worked with him for over a year and a half until he died. But he and I were able to uh, reconstruct the ark. And this is a scale model built by some friend of mine um, that fits the description by George Agopian and later Ed Davis yes. that Dr. Don Shockey introduced to us. These two men never knew of each other. They never heard of each other, but their testimonies dovetail perfectly. They both saw the same thing in the same place. But here it is, the ark, and by the way, ark doesn't mean boat. Ark means box. The ark of the covenant isn't a boat, right. it's a box. So you have here a box, basically, and this is as Ed Davis and George Agopian described it to me. Down the middle is this window, just as the Bible says, there was one window in the roof. Hagopian and Ed Davis both say that one window was the full length of the ship. Now, look at this carefully. By the way, Hollywood took my drawings, unbeknownst to me, to the United States Navy in San Diego at the hydraulics lab where they study ship design. Now, I know nothing about ships. Hagopian was a shepherd. He knows nothing about ships. All I did was draw what he told me. The Navy studied my drawings and built a scale model much bigger. They put it in the hydraulics tank there and they found that Noah's Ark could sustain tidal waves over 200 feet high and not Marvelous. capsize. Marvelous. And the uh, Coast Guard sea captain told me, this is the most seaworthy design I've ever seen. Now, this, Incredible. Was, this was not made to speed through the water. Correct. It, it was, was made to just float, wallow, stably. Now watch this. Artists have been drawing Noah's Ark for centuries. And as an artist, I've had a problem. My trademark, you might say, is authenticity. And having been there Beautiful. and worked on this, I wanted to paint as authentically as possible what Noah's Ark really looked like from first hand experience and first-hand knowledge. So, many artists paint the windows along the roof here. Yes. Okay, watch carefully. If this is in the water and it's rocking in the water, it wouldn't have to go very far for water to go in here, would it? Well stated. But look at this. How far would the ark have to rock to get water up here? See? Also, 
inside, Ed Davis and others have seen inside here, there are three decks open down the middle like a mall. I wish I had a blackboard I could draw. But the middle is open from top to bottom, but there are three decks on each side, and the center part of the mall is open. The light and ventilation from this central window apparatus could give light and ventilation to the entire interior, creating a circulatory air conditioning system. Beautiful, well designed, very well designed. I didn't design it, God did. Yes. I just drew In fact, it. Noah didn't design it. He followed the directions of the engineer. Here's what we, where we went. Okay, now time has gotten away from us. I'd like for you to first show us some of the wood that you have kept as treasures all these years since 1970. Is that correct? 69, yeah. 69. Well, this is leftovers from splinters of the main objects of wood, which we are going to show you in a little bit. But these are splinters that I can reach down in my camera bag. And uh, there's the old search foundation. I never open this except for very, very special people. Well, this is at least a special occasion, my friend. Okay. But here are 5,000-year-old pieces of wood that have broken off the main piece. And uh, I brought these off the mountain every day. And these, are, these parts are just kind of, as we expose the wood to the air, and uh, the splinters would kind of flake off. So we very quickly hermetically sealed yes. our samples of wood, and we'll talk about that later. Now, I have a surprise for you in these closing moments of the telecast. You did not know until today when you flew in this very day of this taping session. You did not know that the Creation Evidence Museum was the recipient of a larger piece of that wood that you personally carried off the mountain uh, through the beneficiary good graces of uh, the family, Crawfords. the Crawfords, Crawfords, Ralph Crawford's mm -hmm. family, his mm -hmm. wife and his daughter, Heidi. Now, I'm going to let you do something. You have performed something that's special to you. I'm going to let you reach into this canister. This canister has not been opened until today. We opened it today for this program. Has not been opened since 1969 when that was sealed. Yes, this is one of the pieces that I brought off the mountain, and it's kind of like meeting an old friend yes. here. <laughs> and uh, it is the same piece of wood, and I'll show you photographs of this um, along with the other pieces. Do you it, know what we're going to have to do? Time has gotten away from us. We're going to have to save this program for another program to actually unveil the brilliant piece, that the huge painting that you have done. Before describing the rest of that, which we will do on the next telecast, uh, tell us in just two brief minutes, how old is that wood and how do you know? You've been right. privy to the research. This wood has been studied in Bordeaux, Madrid, and Cairo by very qualified people who study ancient things. They study the lignite formation, the gain in density, the cell modification, the amount of fossilization, and they said this wood is 5,000 years of age, which would be just right yes. for Noah's Ark. Now, very few people have ever touched that piece of wood. Now, those in the audience cannot do so, but I'm going to let each of our panel here, because of your good graces, at least touch this wood. John and Don. Do you notice how heavy it is? Yes. It's, it's very dense and very heavy and solid. It turned a saw blade white hot to cut this. That is quite a it's testimonial. It's fossilized wood. It is fossilized wood even though it is still fibrous because it is saturated with uh, bituminous pitch, pitch. Bituminous pitch. Which is a technology only developed recently in our lifetime. 
so Noah these had ancients. that technology to be able to saturate huge timbers with great pressure and heat to soak the wood all the way through with this preservative of, bi of basaltic bituminous pitch. They were a superior generation. Now, in these closing moments of the telecast, oh, tune in for the next telecast because you are going to see some incredibly wonderful painting and description of that actual search for the ark on Mount Ararat. The ark, we're convinced, is there. I've been a part of that research. We have flown the mountain with 11 separate helicopter sortie expeditions. We've done the most extensive research, photographic research of the entire mountain. But we have Dr. Alfred Lee who was actually there and touched and carried off the mountain a portion of that wood. The ark looked like this. Three levels, one structure. That is beautifully symbolic of the Trinity as God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit yet one inviting you to know the God of the universe. Would you just bow your head in prayer with me at this moment and gently pray from your heart this simple prayer. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I'm in a storm. I need you as my refuge. Thank you that you sent your son Jesus Christ to die for me. Lord Jesus, right now, right now, I open my heart's door. Come in right now and save me. I will serve you with all my heart. God bless you for trusting the ark, Jesus Christ. Creation in the 21st century.